Well, hello and welcome to I Love Gay Today. And we are with Michael Bach, founder of the Canadian Center for Diversity and Inclusion. How are you? I'm great, Matt. How are you? I'm so glad to be connected with you here. Well, you and I have known each other virtually for years, and uh, this is our first time. Years ago, we would have not considered this an actual meeting, but in today's world, we are now this is, meeting. This is, this is meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I know you already. But, and you. But now you, uh, you've really kind of taken the lead there in Canada, but not, not only for diversity and inclusion, but what's interesting is that you also include the words equity and accessibility. So it seems like you've got a, a very broad but very focused definition at the same time. Yeah, we, we sort of see all the pieces fitting together when you talk about, I mean, traditionally we would talk about diversity and inclusion, and that was great, but we were missing the lens of equity, which is about access to uh, the, same, the same opportunities, the same education. Um, and when you look at marginalized groups, there's an inequity in access. And then, of course, accessibility, which is generally speaking around people with disabilities, which has, again, been left out. So we, uh, we use the, the um, acronym IDEA, I-D-E-A, Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Accessibility, to bring all of the pieces together. Nice. Well, you really set yourself up as kind of a, a thought leader, whether you did it on purpose or not. Because... <laughs> Because not only are you uh, are, are you out there uh, doing the work, but you're also you've got a video blog and you've got all these different ways that you're really kind of also sharing and getting the word out. Yeah, you know, I worked in IT for a lot of my career. I worked as a, a writer for a lot of my career. And then in 2005, when I was working for KPMG, I found this opportunity to uh, lead diversity for the firm. And it was this first time in my life when like my personal passions around LGBTQ inclusion, around disability inclusion, came together with my professional. And ever since then, it's sort of been off to the races. I've been in the field now for 15 years, and I, I love what I do. I love the work I do. It's, it feels like I am contributing to making the world a better place, and at the same time, making a good living. And you also, uh, from what we see behind you, you've written, you're an author and you've written a book. I am. I made the foolish decision to write a book um, because no one told me what writing a book was like, but I wrote a book called Birds of All Feathers, Doing Diversity and Inclusion Right. And uh, it's uh, it came out last year. It was actually a year ago, uh, August 4th. Um, and uh, it's done pretty well. It's a bestseller and it's won an award. I'm pretty proud of it, um, and uh, although it's a lot of work writing a book, I got to tell you. But now you, the, the, you're doing it again. I know because I'm an idiot. <laughs> but yeah, now tell us because this is different now because you haven't written it yeah. yet, but you're doing a uh, fundraising campaign to uh, uh, pull this together. I am. I I have written it, um, okay. and so as part of the uh, of the marketing and promotions. I've done a crowdfunding campaign, also just because I do self-publish the books. Um, and so there's a lot of expense related to putting out a book, and I'm sure one day I will be in the black on both of them. The first book um, was broadly around diversity and inclusion. So it didn't look at any one particular group under this big umbrella of diversity and inclusion. The second book, and, and, and it was a, a bit of a how-to guide for employers. The second book is narrowly focused on LGBTQ inclusion. It, it's a topic, I mean, as a member of the LGBTQ2 plus communities myself, it was a topic that was really near and dear to my heart and one that I, I really wanted to help move the conversation along. I was really moved this year by seeing the number of states in the U.S. that have tabled uh, legislation banning trans folk from participating in sport based on their gender identity. And there's 31 of them, if I'm not mistaken correctly. Um, not mistaken. And I really found that to be disheartening that in 2021 um, we were still there. So I wrote this book called Alphabet Soup, The Quintessential Guide to LGBTQ2 Plus Inclusion which is designed not only to help employers, but to help any organization or individual with a focus on LGBTQ2 plus inclusion. 
and it's mo this I would say is more of a passion project than the first book. This book is a re about making the world a better place for my LGBTQ2 plus cousins. What's interesting, and I'm going to point out, is that uh, not everybody realizes LGBTQ2 mm. plus is unique to Canada, and uh, and it stands for the two spirit, uh, two spirited uh, in your in in our community, and so. But that's a that's a that's quite a nice. Uh, yeah, it's a differentiation and it's a great mix for a great discussion point. Yeah, you know, I mean, we have two spirit people in the United States, the Native American population who also identify as LGBTQ. And I, one of the interesting things with this book was coming up with the right initialism to use. Because, of course, I could have gone LGBTQ, LGBTQIA. Like, there are so many different initialisms out there. And I, I've already caught flack for the one I'm using. <laughs> I can imagine. From people who are like, well, where's the I and where's the P and the D? Oh, girl, the book is only so wide. Yeah. <laughs> I can't have the entire alphabet there. But it, I wanted to make sure that I was using um, respectful language and language that was as inclusive as I could kind of get without having a book that was the size of, you know, my desk. Um, it's compli This is a complicated conversation. And I think you and I are of a certain uh, generation, I will say as I pull back my face, um, where we did not necessarily have uh, an understanding of all of these identities. And it's changed our perception, it's changed our understanding, and we've needed to adapt to those. So the inclusion of two-spirit people is part of the initialism. Obviously, Canada has a large uh, indigenous population. It's very important to me to make sure that we are recognizing those identities. Um, and, uh, and who knows what the next iteration of the book will include, because it will inevitably have changed. Do you, uh, do you have plans to, I, I have, I've seen you online where it seems like you're involved with organizations such as like Out and Equal and even the Canadian LGBT Chamber and so forth. Yeah. But it seems that that's gonna be, it's so well aligned with those organizations, it seems, I'm assuming that'll be a big part of your upcoming. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping, uh, planning, we'll see, to be doing a pretty expense, extensive and expensive <laughs> <laughs> book tour next okay. summer. Yeah. Um, Considering we haven't had sort of a full pride summer yeah. in now two years, I never thought I would miss pride. You know, I'm, I've been out for 35 years, so I've been to a few pride festivals. <laughs> and now I'm like, I want to go to a pride festival. <laughs> um, so next summer, uh, knock um, whatever my desk is made of, uh, I'm intending to be on a book tour from around April to around November because that's the span of when Pride Festivals happen. It will not be all in June because I'm still gay in July, as are most people. Um, so uh, really wanting to get out there and do events in different communities across the United States and Canada. Uh, to celebrate the launch of this book and engage with different organizations like Out and Equal, the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce, um, PFLAG, you know, different organizations that would be interested in participating uh, and promoting this book. I'm really looking to connect with them. Yeah, I love that. Well, I'm looking forward to being able to connect with you out there when we're uh, when we are back at conferences again here coming up soon. So. Absolutely. But no, just really thanks for so much for even just taking a few moments of your time to to tell us a little bit about what you're up to and kind of some of the work you've done and and look forward to catching up with you soon. Oh, it's my pleasure, Matt. It's good to see you. Thanks so thanks much. Thanks so much for being here. Take care. So good. Bye.